Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise, myself Jason, today bringing you whiskey review into the Glenmorangi Spios. So the Glenmorangi Spios is the ninth edition release from the private edition range and it's pretty much one which was just released last month. So I felt it'd be kind of cool to cover it here on the channel as I'm doing a few of the private editions. Now, the Glenmorangi Spios, the name Spios in Scotch Gaelic translates into spice. And that's exactly what they went with. Now, if you don't know about the private editions range, I've done a few videos in Glenmorangie. Actually, I've done a lot of videos in Glenmorangie. I'm going to leave that linked up here. Go and check them out as I've reviewed almost everything from Glenmorangie that I've been able to get my fingertips on. Now, part of the private editions range is using these unique style of finishing whiskies. The Spios is actually an interesting style in itself altogether, and that's because of the cast selection, but I'll get to that in just a second. In terms of it, it's a no-age statement whiskey, bottled at 46%, so similar to all the private editions before. It's actual cast selection, and this is where it's solely matured, it's not finished, solely matured in X rye cast. So you're getting a completely different style coming to this whiskey, which I don't think many distilleries have even tried to use yet. So in terms of the distillery itself, is the Glenmorangie Distillery. They're owned by the parent company, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, and they're located in the Highlands of Scotland. Now, the actual price on that bottle over there currently sits at 75 to 80 pounds here in the United Kingdom, which pretty much is the average price for every single Glenmorangie private edition that's been launched in the past. You will, though, then start to see after a year or two, prices starting to increase because of lack of stock and the demand for it will just go through the roof. People who are collecting them. Now, in terms of exclusivity, it is exclusive, as is the ninth private edition. And in terms of caramel coloring, according to what I got in terms of a press release, I was told this is completely natural. So that's the press release from Glen Morangi. So I've just assessed the color, and this one, I think it's quite a nice light color. It's more like a light like straw, maybe a straw gold. It's not very dark. It's very lighter compared to the Milchon and the Bacalta. So without further ado, let's get into the nose. So to begin on the nose for the Glenmorangie Spear, straight away on the nose, I'm getting the distinctive, sort of like a herbal spice. It's definitely taken on quite a bit of that rye cast. It's like a combination of dried spices and dried herbs together. In terms of spices, overall, I'm getting like a bit of cinnamon, star anise and then it develops into a much more fruitier profile it's almost funny enough i want to say this it's like gingerbread biscuits like you've opened a packet of gingerbread biscuits and you can smell that sort of little bit of spice coming off that but wrapped around this sweetness and that sort of character it then has a little bit of like a, a sweet sort of note coming through which is like red licorice laces a bit of peach in there as well Bit of apple coming through, and it's like a spiced apple. A bit of even lemon, maybe lemon sherbet. And a slight bit that reminds me like a nice sort of warm vanilla sponge cake. All these different flavors coming together. Let's get into the palette next. I'm looking forward to this one. Into the palette. To start out on the Spios on the palette, wow, that was packed with spices. But the overall texture for the whiskey is light. It's quite easy going. The main thing that hits you are these combination of spices. I'm getting bursts of clove, a bit of cinnamon coming through, ginger root, adding that warmth, that spicy hot dimension all around the palate. A little bit of fresh mint, freshly picked mint. As if you're taking it from your garden, you're chewing on it. And there is a slight briny character, which is just there. It's holding itself out. It's almost like you've had a little bit of sea spray actually on your palate. It then has a slight nutty nutmeg character going on. And then I'm getting a slight juicier character, but I'm gonna take a second sip because it does finish rather quickly. So second sip. Now from the second sip, I'm picking out more of those fruitier characters. Once those spices fade off the palate, you're talking about almost like you're taking rye bread. I know a lot of people that are doing healthier diets, they eat rye bread and it just sort of reminds me like that. At first I thought it was oat cakes, but rye bread immediately sort of hits my brain and straight away says that. Getting like apple slices, a bit of orange marmalade combined in these flavors. And the overall texture then develops ever so slightly, but it's still quite light medium. It's not really developing fuller. It's not becoming very viscous, but it is quite spicy. So we're going to get now into the finish and we'll come to our conclusion on the Spios. 
So now we're getting into the finish of the spios. The overall sort of flavors on the finish are quite chalky. As it dries out the palette, you're getting these sort of characters of almost like mint leaves. Maybe mint tea leaves. So you're taking that and you put tea and you've got mint leaves in there and you just sip the two together and it sort of finishes quite early, quite quickly. A little bit of a dryness develops, like a spiced wood even character, spiced oak, giving that little bit of, as it's almost like it's drying the mid palette quite quickly. It then sort of has a little character of that citrusy marmalade, almost like you've got the citrus peel, but with a combination of the pith, adding a slight bitter character with the spices overall, but the overall finish, it's on the lines of, I'd say, a medium, maybe medium full, because the spices do hang around for a while, but that oaky dryness does sort of almost kill it a bit too quickly for my personal liking. So, overall rating-wise, it's time to give the rating, which is my favorite bit, an 87 out of 100. The reason behind that, it's not exactly a rye whiskey and it's not exactly a scotch whiskey in terms of the way in which they fuse the two together. It's very unusual. And if you gave this to someone in a blind tasting, they would probably think it's a light rye. It doesn't feel as strong, but at the same time, it's got a very unique character about it, which I can't write off. It does have a nice complexity and that spicy character does carry over from the rye casts. Uh, for value for money, again, at 80 pounds, I think it's slightly what I would not pay. I think it's a bit too high for me at this point in time, but it's one that I'd say, if you do like your rye whiskeys and you want to try a lighter sort of style, which is kind of an experiment, give this BIOS a try and let me know your thoughts on it. And if you have tried it as well, let me know in the comment section down below. But on that note, I'm going to wrap the video at that. If you have enjoyed, drop in a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, which I'll leave over there. And be sure to check out some other videos on the screen. But it's been me, Jason Whiskey Wise, Mr. Bananas. He's going to have a dram again. And we'll catch you all for the next video. Slanger.